Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. <laughs> this is Gigi. This is Feisty Gigi. She wanted to say hello and wish you a Happy New Year. I'm not sure how long she's going to actually stay in this room with us. She may have to go <laughs> into her room for a little time out. I'm going to behave. So we're going to be talking to you today uh, about resilience. Um, the Divine Order of the Sacred Rose Board met about our themes for the first half of 2021 and we were guided to spend January talking about the really important topic of resilience. And this thing is resilient. She's very resilient. So if we end up having to pause, then uh, it'll be because she's... Um, Too resilient. <laughs> <laughs> needing a little time out. Anyway, um, so... Well, I think part of the reason we thought this is a great topic is just where we're at, you know, in the world with COVID and, um, you know, the, the vaccines rolling out, there is uh, light at the end of the tunnel, but that tunnel probably going to be, you know, fairly long for, you know, a bunch of us. And, um, you know, and it's been a long haul since March of last year. So. Uh, now is really time that we all have to be resilient in terms of, you know, making sure we take care of ourselves, we take care of others, um, and just, you know, keeping the faith that we will get back to somewhat normal, and we'll talk more about that uh, at the later part of this talk, but, um, but yeah, we just have to, we have to be resilient uh, to get by, to get through and to keep the faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not just COVID itself, as you guys um, know well, that there's all the, the ramifications of COVID, the financial impact for a lot of people, the emotional stress. And I think one of the topics that, um, at least in my world, I don't feel like is being talked about a whole lot is the whole mental health impact on um, people, you know, people who were perhaps already vulnerable, and then, um, you know, folks who maybe this has just been a tipping point, you know, and, and push them into that space of, of really feeling mentally unwell. Do we need to take a pause? I'm getting a knuckle chew. <laughs> she might be coming your way. Yeah, she loves earrings. Um, so, you know, on the topic of resilience, I have to say we were guided to start off with Gigi. Again, I don't know if she'll be continuing with us um, because she has been a big ball of light in our lives and really brought so much joy. Uh, first Christmas ever since giving birth that we haven't had at least one of our children with us. It was just Peter and me and I, I know a lot of you guys have been in similar situations. Um, and you know so it was a very deliberate decision to to adopt a kitten um, to help us get through the winter months and there is certainly the risks of um, having a little one in our lives but um, you know she has has helped us with resilience and and staying um, in that space of faith and joy so three points that we really wanted to make with you guys today number one is if you think about resilience um, it's not a surface level thing um, it's not like somebody's buoyant that you know bubbly that a lot of times is very, it could be deeper, but it's a lot of times on the surface, but resilience, it really, it comes way down deep. And, you know, it's, it's connecting, the, the stronger your resilience is, is the better you're connected with that, that deep power within you. And we were talking before this, um, and the, topic came up going deep and I think there's a big difference there because going deep a lot of times when you go deep you you withdraw and resilience it's really um, it's an expression so you have to be engaged but you have to connect to this deep deep power within and so I think that's the difference between going deep and, and connecting deep you mean an expression of source energy source yeah your your soul mm -hmm. connection mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I agree. I, I do think that that's an important distinction. I think sometimes we have to go deep to um, be able to to understand that. But I, you're, you're talking about this this energy coming up from deep within is what I picture. Is that yes? Exactly. And, and, yeah. and as you say, you might have you might have to go deep to connect to that because you know part of what we're talking about here is being centered, and you you might have to go deep to to recenter to connect to that but the actual resilience the expression of resilience is is an expression it's coming out mm. from that that soul connection that spirit connection i love that and as we were preparing and and talking about this um one thing came to mind is that as as you as you do that a lot of times uh, emotions can come up and i think being brutally honest with yourself about those emotions that are coming up um, is is really important because if you're not brutally honest then then that clouds the whole experience of what's um, that resilience that's that's looking to come through you and, and are you really connected to the center because if, if, if you've got filters then you may be left or right of center and not fully connected and in when you're not fully connected you you don't have the full, you can't give it all, give it all you got, Captain. <laughs> of course, it had to go to Star Trek. <laughs> Connect to that, uh, that warp drive. <laughs> this guy. This guy, Trekkie from, from the beginning. Um, and that brings us actually to point number two, which is, um, you know, resilience is defined by adapting to um, stress, trauma, situation, coming back to center, uh, is, is what, you know, terminology we would, we would use. I think Peter and I were talking about how you come back to center, how you come back to balance. Um, and how do you come back to that space of, of faith and return to, return to that love energy. And, um, one of the things that, that came forward as we were thinking about this is, you know, where, where is that for you? Because um, there isn't going back to what was, you know, prior to March 2020, you know, it's, it's not about that. And, uh, you know, so what is center in the moment is really, I think, the question to answer. Absolutely. And the, and the goal, the intention. An example that came forward for me was, uh, I play soccer, I used to play soccer and I hope to play soccer again. You will. Um, and I play goalie. And so there's a lot, there are frequent situations where I'm essentially getting attacked. That, you know, the ball is coming in, there's a person that's running, um, they're coming at me and, you know, and they may score, they may knock me down or whatever happens. And I was thinking about this in terms of resilience and at times I tap in and get angry and I'm laughing because the only time I have ever seen him be like a beast is on the soccer field other than otherwise he's just like this sweet adorable loving gentle man but not on the soccer field but it when I've done better because the anger kind of warps the resilience or it takes me off center and when I've done better is when I've gotten more fierce in kind of the mindset is this is my goal. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to protect this goal. I'm not going to allow the ball in the net. And if I do that, my resilience is more effective because it's not taking me in a direction that's not productive because ultimately that is my goal to achieve my best is to keep the ball out of the net, not to, you know, not to block the other player or defend the other player. It's, it's the ball that is what I, what, what's my object. So being focused in that manner is far more resilient or far more positive effect of the resilience than letting the anger seep in or, or come out. Mm. I love that. So it's, it's really about, living on purpose living your purpose like your purpose is is to defend the goal 
So stand strong in that. Exactly. Love that. So, um, yeah, what is your center? And this is connected to our point number three because I think it's really important to release expectations around what it means, what your center is. And the example that came forward um, for both of us, actually, um, which is kind of an emotional topic for me, but I think a, a very good illustration of what we're talking about here with resilience is um, the whole journey with my parents in the last years of their life. Um, you know, we were, <laughs> we were searching the memory banks for a good story, and one that came to mind was the day that I had to drive my, my father to the nursing home. You know, he had been in the hospital. He had, um, he had been immobile for years and had, um, my brother was his caretaker. We had some people coming in during the day. Like he, um, for years, and this was, you know, my stepmother died of cancer in 2013. And so um, I think it was 2015 um, that he ended up um, going into the nursing home. And maybe it was 2016. I don't know. It's like it's it's all just an, a big emotional blur in a lot of respects. But that moment, I remember being in the car and driving him, and he thought he was going home. And I had to actually drive past the exit to go to where he had lived for 25 years, um, and and explain to him that he wasn't going home, and that he was going to the nursing home, and. I, I think, um, you know, I remember to this day pulling up to the Avalon Healthcare Center, and that was all weird because our daughter's middle name is Avalon, and it's the place where both of my parents died, um, and my stepfather. Um, but anyway, that day that I pulled up, and, and he was in shock, and I was distraught, and, you know, but I, I had to stay in that place of of purpose and resilience and, and stay in that place, not just for myself, but also for him. Like he needed me to be resilient and I needed him to just, you know, um, actually I didn't really need anything from him. I just needed him to, um, well, I guess accept. not accept. Yes, that's true. I mean, I'm, I'm, as I'm saying that I'm picturing, you know, he could have been really, um, retaliatory and he wasn't um, he did accept he was a very graceful man so um, but you were saying that 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 story is sort of like a microcosm of the whole long long journey between 2012 and 2018 with with the uh, four parents really yep yeah and that took resilience on Elvie's part my part uh, her brother's part and several other people family members and caretakers um, all kind of pulling together and, you know, keep moving forward. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny. Um, both of my parents were sailors. That's how they, they met. And um, my father was extremely competitive. And there was sort of this, this family joke that my father was um, trying to outlive my stepfather because they were all in the same nursing home so that was like my family tree is kind of like this you know so it was my father my mother and my stepfather were all in the same nursing home they would actually eat next to each other and have to be fed by other people next to each other so that created all kinds of emotions um, one of my brothers had a really hard time with that understandably um, one in particular and it, it was just um, think there was a lot of opportunity for growth, for strength, for um, for really shoring up that, that resilient muscle, so to speak. And, and I think there was an opportunity for healing yeah. in that, but it wasn't easy. No, it was not easy. And, and it, really, it really took the resilience for those healing effects to happen. Right. So reason I share this story um, with respect to point number three around expectations, expectations of what it means to be um, coming, ad adapting and coming back to, um, to center because I have released, you know, the, the, the last decade was um, 
quite intense and it has affected my energy levels and my health and 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 I'm good I'm at peace with with all that's that's um, happening with me um, but I don't have an expectation that I will go back to feeling as energetic and in the same place of health as I was um, prior to all of that happen happening I may I'm not holding on to not being able to do that I'm just staying present and uh, really focused on center in this moment and released expectations of, around uh, what will be because that's kind of irrelevant actually and on a physical level your parents are no longer with us in the physical plane so there's no going back to the dinners we shared and the being by the ocean and in the pool and, and all the all the things that we shared with them other than our memories and so it's I think that's one of the part, things of the resilience is is being okay because there's going to be unknowns and you can kind of picture in your mind okay well they're not gonna I'm not gonna be able to visit them on Christmas or you can you can set those expectations but until you live them there you don't there is an unknown piece to that and I think as we started out with the COVID thing, there's an unknown piece to that. What's going to be the new normal? Um, are people going to go to concerts and large gatherings? Sure they are, but are you? And, you know, and we don't know and what's going to happen to some of the businesses and stuff um, that have struggled and, and closed. Are they, are new ones going to bounce back or is it just going to be a changed way of life? And, and none of us really know. But part of that resilience is, is being okay with that and being ready to, to greet the new center, the new normal. You know, I was thinking about the woods back here um, just before we started recording here, actually, and about how the forest is such a beautiful example in nature of resilience because um, the woods that we walk in every day are, um, there's sections of them where a certain kind of tree has, um, gotten some kind of blight or whatever and died off and so there's areas of the forest where there's all this new growth these trees have died but there's all this new growth that's coming back and they're a different kind of tree you know they're the the white pines i think are, are filling in where these um elms i guess elms. elms and some oaks i think have have died off yeah so you know just realizing that that center is is always going to be this moving target so I just have to share this one little story before we move on here um, about this guy because it just came forward and it's just when I think of resilience, uh, you know, I just keep hearing over and over in my head, return to love, return to love. It's always about coming back to love. And there were times taking care of my parents where it was just a real uh, test of our patience. And um, this is going to make me cry. So. Ever since I gave birth, um, we, we discovered that I don't do the night shift. I just, I've never been able to do well, um, staying up late. Um, but this guy can. So he and my father would stay up watching NCIS or whatever show they were, my father was fixated on at the time. And then Peter would take him up to bed and my brother was living at the house. We would just go down for two or three nights every week um, to help out. And you would um, take him up. Do his nightly routine and tuck him in. And his nightly routine would sometimes take like an hour because he would just hang out in the bathroom or whatever. But he couldn't do anything alone because he needed, he had, he had a walker and he needed help. And you would lie on the floor outside in the hall. Yeah, we'll just wait for him to be ready. But it was a wonderful thing for me, um, uh, as you probably know. We talked about it before that I did. I lost my parents when I was thirteen, so I never, really never had that father experience as an adult, and um, so it was healing process for me to be able to to fill that role and to and to share that love uh, when I tucked him in and and kissed him goodnight. You guys really had your own special, special relationship. You did? 
Big guy. The big guy. Here comes the big cat. Yep. All right. So. Wipe my tears <laughs> on you. So we started with the little cat. <laughs> now we're we're finishing. She's up all here. grown up. She's all grown up, right? In one video. This is um, a little bit ornery, Rosie. She's still getting used to having the little one in the house. Uh oh, here comes the little one. This could be this could be a little bit of a difficult moment. Anyway, uh, Rosie wanted to say hello. So, our card deck for this month. I'm going to pick a card from Stacy Demarco's Queen of the Moon Oracle. I've been using her cards a lot lately. Um, and if you haven't seen the Wheel of the Year spread that I did for Angels Teach on the Angels Teach YouTube channel, um, you might want to check that out. Um, the message I got, I actually got a, one of her decks just for the Wheel of the Year spread. Um, it's her newest deck, and um, the message that I got from my angel friends is that that deck really uh, represents these newer energies that have come in um, very well. And uh, so it's a, it's a great deck to be using. Um, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't think you guys can see. The little one is yeah. also on Peter's lap. Ears. All right. So Queen of the Moon Oracle card for this month. Peter is being very resilient. Attraction. This Sliver Moon or Silver Moon? need my glasses for this super moon my goodness okay of course of course it's that with attraction you know and and it's a little bit sort of expected and cliche but it's really the message that I'm getting from this is that a big part of resilience is mindset and um, what what kinds of thoughts are you um, focused on what are you allowing in your life are you allowing the um, Thank you, Rosie, growling here. Are you allowing the the uh, ordinary side of, oh man, there's this little little twerp that's in my life now. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna growl and I'm gonna, and and she's gotten better. She's gotten a lot better. She's been allowing the love in a much bigger way than she she was a week ago. Um, or are you just gonna? focus on what is right now and, and have gratitude for all the goodness that's in your life because um, it's a big part of what you're bringing into your reality. Absolutely. I just have to see this. I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> and, and I see the, uh, the super moon there is, is, is kind of what we were talking about, the, the center deep, deep energy mm. that you can tap into. Um, within your soul, your soul connection, your spirit connection. I love that. I love that. All right, so. All right, you can leave. <laughs> what is our tenant? I surrender to my soul's purpose with sacred prayer. Oh my God, I have a tail coming out of my head. Look at that, Peter. <laughs> And I thought this was very appropriate. I drew this just before the video because, um, you know, how better to connect to that, make that connection to that deep energy than to surrender to your soul's purpose with sacred prayer. Mm. That feels so yummy, doesn't it? Perfect. It is perfect. It is perfect. And I do want to emphasize the soul's purpose, you know, because I think sometimes there's the... A lot of times there's the graying of the my purpose versus soul's purpose, which is more expansive and more connected to that, that deeper truth. Absolutely. More centered. Yeah. All right. So the little one is now falling asleep on Peter's lap. And thank you for uh, having patience with all of our feline festivities here. Um, hopefully it brought you a little smile, a little joy. Anything else you want to share? Share in the love. <laughs> share before we. Uh, no, I feel things. complete. Mm, feeling a little. Okay. 
there was one little when I asked my, myself if I was complete there was one little mm, and that one little mm is that in simplest terms resilience is always returning to love whatever it is that's challenging you always return to love so with that shall we let's do our tenants let's do our tenants I open my heart with deep gratitude and intend today to master my spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical energies. I am dedicated to my spiritual practice. I surrender to my soul's surface through sacred prayer. I own my guidance. I live in partnership with my angels. I serve with a loving heart. I am compassionate in every moment. I trust it's all good. I allow immediate forgiveness. I honor my truth. I listen to the spiritual messages within my physical body. I express myself creatively. I am one with Mother Earth, and so it is. So thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us here. Uh, please, as you are inspired, share this message with your like-minded friends and family. And Happy New Year. So much love to you and yours. Blessings. Be well. Love you.